Welcome to this week's Ask Charlie. I am back in my kitchen and I thought I would show you how to make Seville orange marmalade. It's a small window of opportunity when the Seville oranges are ready to um, be used for marmalade making pretty much January through to the beginning of February and then that is it. So now is the perfect opportunity to have a go at marmalade making if you have never done it before. And I hope watching this video inspires you and encourages you to give it a go because it's such a wonderful thing to make and to enjoy. Even if you don't like marmalade, it actually is wonderful with chicken. It's great in bread and butter pudding and it's my secret ingredient in my Christmas cake, uh, which is how I got into making it. Plus, I have a husband who absolutely loves it. So let's get going. The things that you need are a muslin. Now this is very, very old and worn. It was one of the children's and it has made, I mean, I dread to think how many jars of jams and quinces and marmalade has been through this muslin, but it is brilliant. And I find children's baby's muslins actually better quality and work better. You don't need to buy a specific one. If you've got an old muslin hanging around, use it. And I just pop it over a glass bowl that I've got here. One kilo of Seville oranges, or um, I use eight and a lemon. The lemon is important. It just um, adds to it. And here I've got my big preserving pan out and I've got two litres of water. It doesn't matter what temperature it is. I find these knives, I get them in Lakeland, Victorinox. Uh, they're Swiss made, brilliant for uh, this process and you will see exactly why in a moment. So, cut your oranges in half. I'm just going to show you a couple because it's a long process and it would be very boring for you watching me do this for a couple of hours. But that is the inside of the orange. And I'm just going to squeeze out all the juice. And you will get some pips and you will get some pith. The pith and the pips are essential. So you need to reserve all of that. You can do it on an electric and whiz through it, but actually there's not that much juice and it comes out pretty quickly, so I don't mind doing it by hand. And you'll see that the pith is coming out. Pull that out and pop that in your muslin. So we'll just do this one as well. And you do exactly the same with the lemon, I will show you. So you can see here in my juicer, I have got a lot of pith as well as the pips. And I'm gonna pour that juice into my water. And I'm just gonna let that drip through and get any more juice. Um, there's two more pips there. So into the muslin. In fact, you can't see my muslin here. Let me put that in front. And hopefully you can see. I don't normally film in the evenings, but this is something that I do in the evening. So I wanted to show you exactly how I do it. And I, I made a batch last night. Sarah and I watched The Crown while doing it, which we're thoroughly enjoying. The joys of finally having Netflix in the depths of Sussex. So squeeze all of your lemon juice out, add that into the water and again, save those pips and pith. I am going to cut my orange in half and then in quarters. I find it easier and more manageable to do it this way. Now you want to take out, one of the dogs is coming for a drink of water behind, so that is that background noise and pop that in your muslin. But then, and actually I'm gonna bring you up close so you can see exactly how I do this bit. I love these knives because actually they're sharp, but they're not sharp enough to hurt me. So I'm going to get out as much of this pith as I can. 
Now, I think you could just pull it out. Um, let me show you. Like that. But actually, I find the more pith you get out, the better your marmalade is. And that's from my experience. So actually, I use this knife very carefully just to scrape out that excess pith there. So it's looking like that rather than that. Can you see? And I think this is what gives it the winning edge or for me anyway. And it's personal preference. Lots of people like their marmalade in different ways and it's what you get used to. But actually I've had such great feedback about this marmalade that I think it's worth taking the extra time just to get that pith out. Let me show you one more. All the dogs are very thirsty tonight. That's not the one that's coming for a drink. Like that. Then I turn it over and I really finely slice. Now again, this is personal preference. You might like a thicker cut marmalade, in which case go for a thicker shred. Uh, shred. If um, you can find a marmalade shredder. I find they're a little bit coarse and it's a bit like farmer's marmalade. Um, I prefer, and it's probably because I'm quite particular, um, I prefer cutting it really finely. And then cut into, you don't want to have long shreds, so cut those up and add those in to your water and your juice there. So I'll just show you one more and you do exactly the same with the lemon but this is why it's something that you want to sit down for because when you're doing eight oranges it is time consuming and you just want to have peace and quiet and get lost in your thoughts or it's you know it's difficult to completely concentrate if you're watching something on a screen but listen to an audiobook or something like that and just cut away. I don't have the best knife skills, so I'm not really quick at cutting, but actually I just find it therapeutic sitting here. And so you just keep on going until you've done all of your oranges like this. Then when you've got all of your pith and pits from juicing, you put your juice into the water, your pips and your pith into your muslin, you tie up your muslin bag with a piece of string and leave it. I'll show you that bit, but that's gonna be a lot later on this evening. Done. I'm just going to put these last bits of shred into my water with my juice and then show you what I do with the muslin. So here I've got all my pith and pips in my muslin and I'm just going to gather up all of the corners like this. Get all the side bits out as well. And I've got a piece of string. I'm just going to tie this up. I'm going to wrap it around a couple of times. Pull it taut. You don't want anything escaping, so make sure it's nice and tight. I'm going to 
just do a simple bow is fine like that and then pop your muslin into your big pan with your water your juice and your bits of shred and leave that overnight and this is why I do it in the evening because I can then do it peacefully leave it to settle overnight and then bring it to the boil and then simmer without the lid on for a minimum of two hours and it will reduce a little bit which is what you want so you make sure you don't have a lid you don't have it covered I do just put a cloth over it tonight to leave it out on the side but simmer it without the lid on let it reduce and then I will show you the next step tomorrow My marmalade sat overnight. I then brought it to the boil on the auger and then put it in the simmering oven down here for a few hours without the lid on because you want it to reduce. So it is now looking like that with the muslin bag in there. Now this is um, the dirty bit. <laughs> I am going to squeeze out as much as I possibly can from my muslin. All the pith and pips are tied up in there and that contains the pectin which is going to help it set so the more you can get out the better but it is a little bit um, well you'll see it's a bit of a fiddle it's a bit of a faff I'm just trying to get the shreds off here you want to do this, you want to let it cool before you do this because you will burn your hands, although it's just been simmering, it will be really hot. So let it cool, let it sit, and then when you can hold it, this is what you want to do. Just squeeze. Oh, the dogs are all making a noise. Girls, go and lie down. Go and lie down. <laughs> They're all padding around. They've heard somebody. So can you see? I'm going to bring this up close. Can you see that jelly-like um, coming out of my muslin? And you want to get as much of that. You'll see it. And it looks quite liquidy at the moment, but trust me, it's quite, it's quite jelly-like. And you want to really, really, really wring this out. It will hurt your hands a little bit, squeezing it so much. But you want it all out so this is going to take a good kind of five minutes at least can you see it's literally like jelly on my fingers but I'm going to just get as much of this out as I can into there Right, I don't think I can get any more out of that, so I'm just going to pop it to one side and rinse my hands. In fact, get as much off your hands as you can into there. You don't want to wash that down the drain. Right, back in a sec. Right, I have got my sugar, which actually I've just had warming on the auger because it helps to um, melt it quicker if it's warmer. It is a horrific amount of sugar. You just have to turn a blind eye to that. And I use granulated. So it's two bags, two kilos of granulated sugar in there. You don't need any special sugars because the Seville oranges have so much pectin already in them. You can just use regular sugar. Now, on a low temperature, you don't want this to get too hot. On a low temperature, just melt the sugar all together and then you can start boiling it. But it's so important that the sugar is properly melted before you um, increase the heat. I've just put that on a low heat, but I just want to talk to you about putting a plate in the freezer. It may sound crazy, but this is for your set test. So it's really important that you put a plate um, or even two, it doesn't matter. Sometimes you have to do more set tests, so if you have a second plate, that is ideal. So that 
these to go in the freezer ready. And I then have a big roasting tray and I'm gonna put my jam jars all onto the tray to get those ready as well. I always put a few extra jam jars in at this stage because if for some reason your marmalade is going to make a little bit more than you had anticipated. You've got an extra jar sterilised and ready. So these jars have all been through the dishwasher, but then I put them into the Arga. I will show you that bit when we get onto it, but they are here and they're all ready because it's best to be prepared. I've brought you right up close. Now this is just beginning to start to melt. And it's really important that the sugar is 100% melted before you increase the heat, otherwise it will burn and your marmalade will ruin. So this stage is really crucial. And you can pot around, you can do, go off and do jobs, you can leave it till it's properly melted, but just make sure it really, really is. I don't know if you can see a little bit difficult with the marmalade shreds but this is not melted at all you'll know when it's melted because it the liquid will be completely clear at the moment it's cloudy because that's the sugar that hasn't dissolved can you see that it's the liquid has all gone clear so that now i know that my sugar is completely melted so it's time to increase the heat and bring it up to the boil I've got a good boil going on now and you want it to boil like this for about 15 to 20 minutes. You don't want it to boil over. So you need to stand by and just maybe slightly take it off the heat if you think it's going to go over the top and stir it occasionally because you don't want it to catch on the bottom either. Once it's really boiling well, I'd set a timer for 10 minutes and start doing your set tests after 10 minutes every five minutes until you think it's almost ready. Alexa is just going off for 10 minutes. I'm gonna do my first set test. So literally, I just put a small amount onto my plate. Alexa, stop. Alexa, set the timer for five minutes. I put them in a clockwise movement. So the next set test I do, I'll do over here. Anyway, I'm gonna pop this back in the freezer for a minute and then show you what it's, what it's like. Right, to do my set test, I'm just gonna run my finger. Now, that is too runny. It's not wrinkling, it's not ready yet. So I'm gonna put my plate back in the freezer and in five minutes, I'll do the next set test. Five minutes, starting now. I'm gonna do my second set test. So I'm going clockwise around my plate and this is beginning to look more like it, just the way it comes off my spoon. So I'm going to pop this back in the freezer about 30 seconds and then come and test it with my finger. Right, second set test. It is just beginning to wrinkle. That is perfect. So that has had 15 minutes and it's ready. So I'm now going to take it off the heat. So I've taken my marmalade off the heat and I'm going to set the timer now for 15 minutes. Alexa, set the timer for 15 minutes. 15 minutes, starting now. I want the marmalade just to rest before I jar it, but I'm now gonna put the jars into my baking oven of the Arga. So that's probably about 150 to 160 degrees. I don't want to put them into the really hot oven because I don't want the glass to crack but I want them to be hot when I pour the marmalade in and then they're sterile. So in they go. And this is exactly the same process I use for any jam making um, or chutneys. Two essential bits of kit, a jam funnel, which is so helpful, and a jam ladle. This is really handy for pouring in, but I will show you that in a minute, but make sure that you've got them ready to hand and just leave your marmalade to settle. And then I find 
and I only do this with marmalade, I don't do it with the other jams. I um, jar them immediately, but it evenly distributes the shreds throughout the jar if you let it rest. And also any scum that comes to the top, you can easily scoop out as well. There's very little scum on my marmalade, but there was a tiny bit. So I'm just going to scoop that out as best I can. I'm going to give it a stir and then I'm going to get my jam jars out of the oven. And now the jam jars. You have to be terribly careful doing this because they are hot. I have moved the camera down so you can see. So I'm going to put my jam funnel on there. I have got my jam ladle and I'm just going to fill up all the jars, as, working as swiftly as I can so I can get the lids on while they're hot. You want to fill them as full as you can without them over, overflowing. I also wouldn't let your marmalade sit for any longer than 15 minutes because it will start to cool too much. Now, because I'm filling my jam jars hot, you don't need to put a wax disc in. You can just put the lids straight on. So I've got a little tiny bit more in there, but not enough to fill a whole jar. So now I'm going to put my lids on as swiftly as I can and you need a tea towel to hold and screw them tightly now. This little extra bit of marmalade that I have got in here, I'm just going to wipe that all off there. I'm going to pop into a ramekin with Sai, and he can have that for breakfast tomorrow. So there we are, 12 jars of marmalade and a little bit extra for Sai to enjoy tomorrow with his breakfast. I hope that you have found that useful. Thank you so much for watching and wishing you a happy weekend and happy marmalade making.